Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, and life in a northern town. You'll find show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. You can leave a comment. You can sign up for my patron site. You can purchase a virtual cup of coffee or even sign up for the newsletter. Come back weekly and we'll chat. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. March 19th, I hear birds singing. I hear robins and cardinals and blue jays and sparrows and red wing blackbirds. The first day of spring is on the calendar. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be spring here 100% for a while, but we're getting hints of spring and maybe 50 degrees today. The snow is melting. The fairy gardens are exposed. We are looking at more daylight hours and it's so exciting. So at least there's some positivity in all of the sea of strange and unusual things happening in the world. So since I podcasted last, uh, remember it was Daylight Savings Time, Mercury Retrograde, Full Moon, Friday the 13th, and I was bemoaning on and on about, you know, life of having that kind of stuff, and it was weird. Well, it only got weirder, right? It's been extremely weird. And on the front end of all of the coronavirus weirdness, my mother-in-law died um, suddenly, unexpectedly. She didn't have any signs of being ill. Um, She called for an ambulance and passed before they got there. Whatever happened, happened. We don't really know 100%. Um, It's complications of her underlying condition is what's on the death certificate. Uh, My husband and I... um, we're not 100% sure if she'd had the coronavirus or not. She had no signs of anything like that. So we're going with the fact that she had a lot of health problems, including metastatic bone cancer and COPD with a heart disease. So anyway, that's always going to be in the back of your mind though, right? I mean, because right after she died, things got super weird around here. Um, I knew of the coronavirus since its inception. I write the infection control newsletter for the employer that I work for and I've been really careful hand washing. I have gone to a couple of larger events but it wasn't um, recommended to not go at the time. I went to Autorama if you remember and we were starting to ramp up for the summer and I kept telling my husband I think you need to just relax because I don't think we're going to be ramping up as much and he goes but it's it's something that is going around but people are surviving it and it's not that big of a deal until we understood the ramifications of flattening the curve Um, been working real hard pretty much since January to flatten the curve and the only time we went out I went out was to the car show Um, overall life has gotten smaller and smaller into just going to work and coming home. Um, through all of the funeral, um, planning, because when she passed away, gathering hadn't been limited yet. You could still have a funeral and gather. And while we were cleaning out her apartment, because there was a short time, Um, given to us for that and we just needed to get it done when we had help Um, it was a roller coaster ride of yes you can have food no you cannot the bars and restaurants are closed we can't have more than 100 you can't have more than 50 you can't have more than 25 so anyway as it goes through the process of this unrolling and our governor is being very very aggressive in trying to suppress and flatten the spread of this because we don't have a lot of hospitals we don't have a lot of medical staff we don't have a lot of resources once you leave um, some of the metropolitan areas we're very rural and so we've been very very cognizant of this and so we just decided we'll have the funeral services and all that another time. When we can properly gather 
and tell stories and maybe make it more of a celebration of life. Maybe we won't have a funeral. Who knows? If this goes on and on, um, we'll just do something else. But it's been an emotional roller coaster ride over the last week just with the funeral of my mother in law's uh, planned funeral. Um, just, yeah, I'm getting confused about it. But, you know, and you know, you know what I'm saying. That is an emotional disaster when you lose a parent. And so my husband has been exceptionally um, affected by it. I knew her for 30, you know, 35 years. And it was very sad. So now I have a, two rooms in my house that have some things that we kept. There's a storage unit that has some things that we need to go through at some point in the future. And uh, a garage full of things that we need to dispose of. And just trying to do it all at once isn't going to happen. And so we'll just piecemeal the rest of it in our own time. So... With all of that going on, I haven't got much done. I haven't got much done in the housekeeping department. Um, I've been doing my basic fly lady routines because that's all I could do. Dishes are done. Um, we're doing laundry on crisis management. That will start changing this week and I'll start pulling ahead. Overall, it's just been wiping things down, trying to get food, uh, you know, surviving that and work. So, I'm a nurse and it's been uh, very bizarre at work. Um, I work in an office setting where it's more, um, I do work with doctors. It's it's an outpatient clinic. So we've gone to telephone calling. Most of my job is calling patients. We're trying to limit people coming to the office and we're still up in in the air on how we're going to deliver um, doctor doing their job. So, you know, that's been a whole week of meetings and planning and the roller coaster ride because then you were planning something and then the the recommendations change and then the the county changed the way they want things done and it, yeah, it's just been like this all week. It's been the theme for 2 weeks now, maybe more like 3. And I'm just trying to not get frustrated and delivering services with no equipment and they're getting equipment. We don't need equipment. We don't do that kind of nursing. It's mostly, I I talk to people most of my job. So it's just a matter of people aren't going to be coming in. Um, People don't want to come in. Part of it is good, good, good. We don't want them, but we need to check on people. So it's a lot of phone calling and checking. And the doctor will review what they want to do with their medicines. And we're trying to figure out how to do. We don't have the technology where I work yet. And it's coming very soon for the doctor to do a video call right to people's homes. We have telemed, but we don't have it to their patients' phones in our public health system. So all of this has been a disaster for administrations. They have they have been working tirelessly and doing the best they can. And my boss looks like she's been drugged through a knothole backwards, as my grandma used to say, um, because there's so much to do. And so I'm trying to do some supportive little tasks to help out and do what I can. And in the meantime, you, we do the best we can with what we have. And um, it's just... We don't have a lot of masks and gowns, but we've got lots of other personal protective equipment like gloves and cleaning supplies and stuff. But that's just been the weird thing, right? I mean, it's like there's you just can't go order more masks. You can't just go order hand sanitizer because there isn't any to have. Been scrubbing through um, the stores in town looking for some of that stuff and, and we're good. But it, it just was like, whoa, we'll just order it. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, there's a shortage. So... All of that to say, it's been totally bizarre, totally bizarre, um, because I haven't gotten much done. I mean, there's not a whole lot to show for all of the effort and the emotional draining that I have spent in all of the activities I'm doing. Um, I have nothing to show for it. Really, I don't. Um, just when I look back on, you know, like the notes I've made, the the sewing I've done, a couple hand stitches here and there, a couple of 
um, traffic jam. I'm working on traffic jam. That's Pat Sloan's pattern, and we're doing it in the Facebook group, My Creative Corner 3. Um, I've got a few of those blocks done. I want to get 20. I think I'm, I don't know, I think I'm at 15. It's just one of those things where uh, things are very, very fractured and very much not on a linear track of getting done, right? Is this how it is for you right now? Um, it's like a million things get done in like 30 second increments and then you have to pick it back up and drop it and pick it back up and drop it. So I think most of the chaotic part of both my personal life and work life is going to settle down now. Now it's going to be the long settling in and waiting out what we're supposed to do and how we're going to deliver our job for this period of time. So I'm going to get my sewing machine set back up. I had to take it down because we actually ate at the table. Um, I've done a lot of hand sewing on my uh, temperature quilt from last year. I make in progress because um, before all of the lockdown stuff happened, my glasses came in and I can see. Um, it's wonderful. I can actually, I feel like I'm a lot faster with sewing these hexagons together. Um, English paper piecing, I think I'm going to really like it. Um, what else have I done? Well, I am taking advantage of the people who are putting forth a lot of freebies for folks. Um, this week, the Dropkick Murphys on St. Patrick's Day did a two-hour live concert on YouTube and Facebook, I think. Um, it was phenomenal. It was the highlight of my week so far. It was positive. It was wonderful. It was entertaining. And it was one of the most generous things I've seen someone do. They've played St. Patrick's Day in Boston for since their inception and it was a pretty good kick-ass concert i think it's it, last i checked yesterday it was still up on youtube it's so worth it if you like rock irish music it it was great and i've always wanted to see them in concert never had the time or the money i know a lot of other artists are doing free concerts people are putting up all kinds of daily um inspirational things. They're doing daily sewing, daily knitting patterns, daily spiritual things, daily anti-anxiety and coping because we're all lonely and disconnected and at home. And during the times like these people, I am always amazed at how much they step up and come together and offer goodness. Yes, even during the toilet paper crisis. And yes, there is a toilet paper crisis here too. My husband, um, right before he went back to work after his mom died, went to the store to actually look for toilet paper and a couple of other things because, you know, the shelves are wiped out. There's there's food. I mean, we can get cheese balls and caffeine and we've got, you know, bread and things, but meat's wiped out and things, just things, you know, we're, we'll be fine. We got plenty of food. We always have a little extra over the winter. But, you know, it's the people that you follow from store to store to store who are traveling in large groups. And, yeah, there was one of the toilet paper hoarders ahead of him. I was working, and they had gone to the stores that he was going. He had the same circuit. They were right ahead of him. And they were, like, blocking the aisles and then swooping in and each person grabbing the limit of paper and it was a mom and some teenagers and he saw her give them money and everybody grabbed two packs and then they, they took everything. Well, they did this in the second store and there's an 80-year-old lady trying to get a pack of toilet paper. My husband was like, that reminds me of my mother. So he reached over top and he snagged two packs of toilet paper. He said, excuse me, um, you're blocking the aisle. And they said, hey, you can't grab our toilet paper. And he goes, um, no, we need some too. It's people like you who are hoarding and making it difficult for people like this lady. And the lady thanked him. And after they left, she goes, I've been trying to get toilet paper for several days. So this is my second or third trip to the store. And people are blocking me out and I couldn't get it. So he... He goes, you know, it probably was a reaction to grief, but 
man, you don't do that to people. And I told him I'm not getting into toilet paper fights. I have plenty of fabric in my sewing room that can be used for other purposes. I have a lot of old yucky white flannel that can be washed. (laughs) So stupid. I never thought I would live to be telling you a toilet paper story. Really, seriously. Oh my gosh. So we've been home a lot more and... um, during the, what they're calling self-isolation here, uh, we found out that, yeah, the coronavirus is in fact um, in our town. One of the first counties outside of the metropolitan areas because we had international travelers who didn't heed the, um, I'm going to, this is my total opinion here, and I um feel like there was some irresponsibility. They didn't heed that there was a coronavirus crisis in other parts of the world, and they went on a trip to Africa, came back, and did not self-isolate. No. Then they went to the ER on recommendations of their doctor and didn't call ahead to tell what they had been exposed to. And so here we are. People. People. Follow the recommendations. If you're sick, call ahead. Say you may have been exposed. Ask what to do. Now everybody else in town is you exposed. So anyway, you know, I know it's going to come here eventually anyway. I knew that. But, you know, let's not, and you know, let's, let's try to flatten the curve. I don't understand what is so hard, people, to understand. It's saving lives. I, I have to agree with our governor and her aggressive flatten the curve stance. Um, it won't be long. We may be limited on where we can go. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we're sheltering in place like San Francisco. You know, we may be working from home. My husband may not be working at all because he makes deliveries all over northern Michigan in a big semi. And there's not a whole lot to deliver right now. And there's not a whole lot of places that are open. It's going to be a long-term, very interesting thing. But what do people do during times like this? In times like this, I kind of look back over my life and I, I realize, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and what do we do? <clears throat> I make things. I make things all the time because that's what brings me joy, happiness, peace, balance, and the zen. I'm making a very easy brain candy project, the Pat Sloan's Traffic Jam, that is good because you can just shoot through a lot of chain piecing, make four patches, turn the four patches into a plus, add corners, and da-da, you have the block. But sometimes you need something that is a little more intense. Um, So I um, had to tell my customer I'm a little bit behind on long arming. And she came back from Florida and I still have two of her quilts to do. Explained what happened. She was fine. And besides with this um, social isolating, we're going to have to do a pick up and drop off thing on the porch, which I've done in the past. I'll finish up her quilt. So that's pretty zen, you know, loading on a free motion quilting project. But sometimes you need to do something that's a little bit more difficult. Something that is so hard that it takes all of your brain power. I'm kind of done doing the frivolous projects over the last three, four weeks of just doing something for the sake of doing like just knitting a fidget or coloring a page those things are beautiful and wonderful and sometimes my brain needs something that easy and there are some beautiful coloring pages out there that are free anyway but um, there are some really really nice ones out there that people have put up special Um, the lady who does oh my gosh Joanna Bassford Johanna Bassford. She she does has some really beautiful coloring pages out there right now. Um, she's really famous for her. I 
it's I can't remember I'm looking it up here I think it's like secret garden or some sort of coloring book pages and anyway you can check that out online for free you know some other free things you know to keep yourself busy during times like these is uh, you can take a free class on learning how to I'm um, reading my daughter did a list for the group she manages and fruition seeds they have a free class on how to start a garden and um, grow seeds I also got six free magazines some of the most popular magazines from Enchanted Living magazine they have gift for readers during times like these when you want to read some beautiful on magical things love it oh my gosh so they have some of my favorite editions I've never bought this magazine because I didn't have the money but they have one whole edition that's a Tolkien edition is fantasy magic um, stories fiction poetry it's amazing and it's uh, people dressed up like uh, Lord of the Rings th things fairies elves dragons stories how to be a hobbit that's in that edition there's another one on mermaids and the other one on fairies and fairy lore um, all kinds of beautiful things if you haven't got uh, enchanted living's free download that it's pretty darn cool um the other one is oh this is a good one how to master working from home while under quarantine um, how to start a bullet journal um, we're using Google duo to do uh, video calling back and forth to my family members who we can't um, see each other right now my parents are really in lockdown um, my sister-in-law this is what my daughter wrote has an Etsy shop where she sells cool self-care and mental health journals yep that's Renee's um, mental health a workbook as well as the anxiety workbook and that's on with mind and heart um, that is a purchase download you can download Zen and the art of creativity of course you can have a Netflix party this is a good one where everybody um, chooses the same thing to watch and then have it like a, a discussion and Scribd is offering uh, a free service for 30 days there's lots and lots of things that you can take advantage of while you may be home self-isolating or self-quarantining and you may want to even make a quarantini and let's poke some fun at it you know we got to keep our sense of humor so I'm taking advantage of this I'm reading the magazines I'm coloring the pages and all of this has been good especially dealing with the I need a calm simple easy thing to to be brain candy but now I'm ready to do something for the long haul and so I'm going to read something that I wrote in my Creative Corner 3's Facebook group and how I came to the decision on the project that I'm going to make to cope with all of this I feel the need to talk about being home more socially distanced and having more time on my hands to worry about the uncertainty of the times we live in due to COVID-19. I'm still going to work but I'm socially distanced even at my job. I'm doing much of my job via the phone and computer and there may be a time when I work from home. Instead of doing nothing and just wasting my time while isolating at home, I decided to do something to document it. I was choosing between two books that I own, Nearly Insane and Dear Jane. I decided on Dear Jane. Jane made her quilt during the Civil War. It was a time where she made this most complicated quilt one tiny block at a time. In times like these, Jane made a quilt, a really hard, tedious quilt, something to focus her mind and to find some peace in her piecing. I'm going to use stash fabric and I will work on it one stitch, one block, one row at a time. Let's keep each other company and encouraged. And I thanked Andy, um, the sew doctor, sewing doctor in Atlanta, for the Dear Jane idea. She's also working on Dear Jane. 
I don't do applique well, so I'm going to learn a lot about how to do applique on a tiny little quilt. Um, I've got a couple different plans. I found a free Dear Jane Foundation paper piecing um, website, and I'll have to look that up. And so I'm printing it off and doing it in a paper pieced manner. Uh, let's see the website for the free paper piecing. I can't find it. Let me look it up. It's on susangatewood.net under my patterns. She drafted this um, on electric quilt. And you can't buy this anymore um, as an add-on to electric quilt. So I'm downloading her version of it. I also have the book where I can always redraft and do other types of versions if I don't like it. Now I've spent so far the first week of picking the fabric that I have on hand, which is a William Morris uh, print in modern day colors. And that's going to be my theme is that this is an old traditional quilt with bright modern day colors. I printed out a couple of blocks and I started cutting one out. That's as far as I've gotten. And overall, it's been, you know, a lot of decision making and getting started. And that seems to be the theme of this week is just getting through, um, doing the things you can do, not worrying that you don't have a lot of visual progress, but there's a lot of emotional work and a lot of mental progress that has been made. And Dear Jane is going to document my time in this coronavirus world um, in times like these is what I'm going to start referring to it as um, and keep it in perspective that this is not a new normal that I truly do believe that this is just a chapter in my life and that it will be over and in times like these Jane made a very difficult quilt during a very very difficult time so I think I shall also be inspired by her quilt, make that. I'm going to continue to work on Traffic Jam and quilters are quilting because I'm getting phone calls about long arming. So I need to kick it in the butt and get my quilts going that I've promised to have done for people and organize my house a little bit in times like these and sorting and organizing, sewing and quilting, knitting and making. That's what's going to get us through. We may not be able to see each other, but that's why the podcast is so essential. It's still linked to each other. It's a still, we can talk through comments and you can send me an email if you would love. Um, you can leave me a voicemail. I haven't had too many people take me up on that, but you can leave me a voicemail, a voice comment, and I might feature it in the future on the podcast. Let me see if I can find that phone number because all of a sudden I am drawing a blank on it. I'm going to send out a newsletter about once every month or two just to keep people up to date on what's going on. I still have Zen and the Art of Creativity is uh, for sale in the Etsy shop and um, there's going, you know, everything's on hold, right? We're not planning on any trips or public speaking or classes or anything like that for this month. And, oh, here it is. The voicemail or voice comment you can leave me is to the phone number 231-577-6681. That's 231-577-6681. One, And you can leave me a comment. You can do a review. If you want to do a, a review of the podcast on the phone, of uh, the voicemail, that'd be great. Uh, you know, it really helps if you leave a review wherever you're listening to the podcast to help grow the audience. And for patrons, we've got the private patron only Facebook group is up and running and I have one patron I haven't been able to connect with. So if you are a patron and you'd like to be part of the group, um, private message me and we'll make sure that you get in. 
So I want to encourage everybody that together we will get through these times, even though it can be frustrating and bringing up a lot of emotional baggage. Um, I have had uh, some of that during times like these. I've also had some crisis during times like these is going to be that way. But together we are going to get through it and together we will make quilts and I I'm going to make a Dear Jane. And if you want to join me on that journey, let me know. Um, I'm going to be posting about it on the Facebook group, My Creative Corner 3. And we can talk about Dear Jane more at that time. Overall, people need to continue to love each other, to be kind, share the toilet paper, and let me know how you're doing. I'm doing okay. And I expect I'll do even better this weekend in times like these. Be creative. Quilt on, everyone.